Greetings. Hey, Pasta, what's up? How's everybody doing? It's been a while since I've um, shared some information on the internet, so I figured that I should go ahead and I'm not going to say come out of hiding because I don't hide. I don't believe in in isolating myself from the people, so I definitely don't do that. Um, however, I have been, let's just say, on a sabbatical and on more of a spiritual retreat mentally to kind of redefine myself, redefine the mission, redefine my particular movement. Now when, I, now, when I say my movement, I'm not speaking in terms of some form of a radicalized movement where I got a lot of people around me and these particular people do things for me and I'm some form of a guru or some form of a spiritual leader. That That's not what I do. When I say my movement, I realize that my movement is basically employing my energy in a certain way to affect change amongst the whole. And that's what I want to talk about on this video. But before I get into it, I kind of want to just pretty much let people know what's been going on with me personally to a certain extent and just to kind of let people know like where I've been at, like what I've been doing, like you know like I just haven't been sitting up in the house with my girlfriend laid up drinking 40s and kicking it and laying back or you know I haven't just been going to strip clubs and parties and things of that nature like I've actually really been in a deep transformative period and I want to say thank you to all of my followers that and all of my um, subscribers that not only just stuck with me through this time of transition but was sending me positive kudos and positive shout outs definitely want to um, send a shout out to you and thank you you know from the depth of my heart from the bottom of my heart I definitely want to thank you for you know supporting me during that time and I want to say fuck you to those people that try to destroy me during that time um, whether you don't care if you what type of agency you work for or even if you was in my family and you was working with the snitch agency or what not or what may have you I just definitely want to say fuck you because you know I believe in returning energy I return all the negative energy you send to me I return it back to the sender which is a ritual you can return energy back to the sender not just simply return it back by just saying fuck you basically um, I'm not here to please you nor to impress you nor to run from you now, I've been going through a lot um, as you guys know I went through an initiation with the Andromedans maybe a couple years back and that particular situation is still playing out to where they've had a divide amongst the Andromedans and these are the female class that I speak of and in this divide you have some women that have confused this whole feminine energy feminine principle thing and that's kind of what I want to do in this video. So let me, what I'm going to do in this video, let me do it like this. I'm going to answer a lot of your questions by just speaking on what I've been going through at the same time. So that's how this video is going to be set up because I've been getting a lot of forwarded, a lot of questions from my um, staff. I have a service staff um, that helps me and assists me by um, basically taking care of everything for me. I contract all my services out. Even the way I do my videos is contracted out now. So. I totally had, I own nothing. I had to take everything out of my name. Because this group of females, they, uh, one, it's, it's like, okay, you get these teachings and you learn that, you know, you get all this energy because females are more in with the cool delete energy. So you find out that you can use your vagina to, not even just that. Like, I ain't saying like use your vagina like having sex. I'm saying like you can use your, the power that you have from having a vagina which which really goes into understanding the Kundalini energy you can use that power to manipulate men and women and people so a lot of women I guess we can kind of call them like alpha women 
but a lot of women nowadays, they they know that they got this power and they're kind of like mistaking it. And what they're doing is, is that they're trying to, I guess, become the world ruler because they look at it like men rule the world. A lot of people look at it like that. Like this is not even necessarily none of this is true. This is all based upon your opinion. But a lot of people they look at it like men will rule the world, right? So within that, a lot of a group of women got this satisfied and was like, "Yo, if men rule the world." then maybe we should shift this paradigm and since this is the feminine energy and the kundalini energy and we go on into, you know, the the age of Aquarius and things of that nature and women will be more independent and be more not necessarily dominant, but basically will wake up from the spell that was put on them to submit to a man which really goes back to the Garden of Eden story. So really this is more of a backlash to the new energy because everything starts out in chaos. So it's, it got kind of chaotic, you know. And um, I just so happen to be one of the individuals that publicly allowed and aided and helped this energy to come in. So eventually, they turned on. They tried to turn on me. Essentially, is what happened. Um, acting like they were my friends, um, and I didn't keep in mind. I didn't sleep with any of these women, so this didn't have anything to do with. Um, it's not a woman out there that can come this out there and say, yo, like I slept with dude and, you know, um, got him in the, and pretty much knocked him off his post and knocked him off his square. You see what I'm saying? I came in and, and used my vagina power to, to destroy him. It didn't necessarily happen like that. It was more on a mental level with me is how it happened. They, they played a lot of mind games and uh, mind spells on me. And that was just something that I had to go through, so I'm not really trying to boast on that and make that the whole topic of discussion, but it's something that needs to be talked about and discussed because when you deal with astrology and this information uh, pertaining to astrology, it's very much feminine, yin-based type of information. So it attracts a lot, a lot more women than men because men are very much more physical Everything with men happens through the eyes. Like our whole reality is based upon what we see. Whereas with women, your you guys' reality is predicated upon how you feel and the emotions. And a lot of women they know how to manipulate the emotional ethers. See, the emotional ethers are much more powerful than the physical ethers that govern physical reality. So men, we're builders, we're hands on. Like we wanna for us changing something is putting our hands on it and destroying it. Like if I get upset with you like they say in the streets, I might want to change your form. That means I might want to murk you because I'm upset with you, so I want to put my hands on you and do something to you. That's the way a man thinks, whereas a woman, she's much more intelligent. So she learns how to manipulate through the snake energy or the serpent energy. And she manipulates through the emotional ethers. So this, this group of women, these women, they say they spring from that kind of attacked me. I basically kind of got into a, a dispute with a group of women. They attacked me and they used reptilian males to do it that work for various different authorities, like, you know, authority figures. And they used a group of law enforcement authority figures to try to intimidate me and to try to punk me into leaving it all behind. And not only that, they tried to, you know, even go as far as to extort my name and to extort what it, what I do on the internet. And they were successful to a certain extent in doing that. I would give them that. So that was a trial that I went through and I just kind of um, had to reposition and reorganize um, this here movement and me putting out my energy into shift in the world and that's what I want to get into now. See this the name of this video is gonna be called the perfect selfie. The perfect selfie. And the reason why I'm calling it the perfect selfie is because we're in the age of Aquarius. And within the age of Aquarius it goes into a science called I know. And your reality in the age of Aquarius is based upon you yourself and what you know. See, in Pisces, it's I believe. When you go into belief, in order to believe something, that means you have to come into it blind to believe in it. Whereas this energy in Aquarius, 
it's much different because in this new age of Aquarius you don't have to be like Eve to exist in this energy actually be like Eve can confuse you if you stay stuck in the be like Eve and believing something it's okay to believe something but you've got to follow it up okay knowledge like our master taught us there's belief faith and fruition as the wonderful prophet taught us and belief is the first thing that's the first degree there's three degrees in, in life in what you do belief is always the first step faith is the next step and then fruition bringing that thing into reality so you have to during this time we're in the time it was called the perfect selfie and your energy and you changing your reality at, at, on an individual basis will automatically change the world. See, remember before, back in the days, all the different spiritual leaders and things of that nature, we were we we kind of like tried to. When I say we, I'm speaking of spiritual leaders like back in the Martin Luther King days and back in the Edgar Case days and those days when you know a lot of the older gurus. It was more about like changing the world on an outward level, like writing a bunch of books and things of that nature. And changing the world more so like on an outward level and getting a movement and getting a building and you know doing building on a physical outward level like going out which is the opposite of what we're doing in this energy this is more of an inner energy that the more you go within the more your reality shapes shifts and changes on the out on the external and that's the energy that we in so I call it the perfect selfie because you have to learn how to manipulate and work with your energy in a way to where you attract everything to you because everybody knows that when you get high up into the spiritual realm and you're still in a physical body your what will make you an advanced uh, creature or an advanced being is your ability to be able to exist in this reality by attracting and by allowing and by and through the system of magnetism that's what will, that's what this determines as to how advanced you are in high spiritual reality so what am I what do I mean by that certain extraterrestrial groups and keep in mind all of this is stuff that people have emailed and asked me and I'm putting into a video so just 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 roll with me for a minute so certain extraterrestrial groups, they may be in physical shells and in physical bodies, but they may their how far that physical body moves in the outward world on a day-to-day -day basis may be very little, maybe even on a week-to-week -week basis. Even there are some Buddhas and some yogis that meditate for most of their reality. Most of their reality is spent in seclusion and in meditation and things that they need. They attract through meditation and their students and p different people that may be, uh, that, that they may connect with, may bring them gifts and things of that nature to their actual cave that they're meditating in or their, their mansion, wherever they're at. Different students may bring them gifts and things of that nature. But what I'm saying here is, is that they're changing the reality by going within their self. And when you go within yourself, you become a visionary and you become a seer so much so to the point where you will be able to see how things are going to play out for maybe a week in advance. It might start off as a week in advance, then it may go up to two weeks in advance, then it may go up to a month, two, three, four months in advance. And that's what happened with me. So when I was going through my situation, I went into meditation when it first started happening and I began to see how things would play out if I continued to stay on the course that I was on. So I decided to withdraw and begin to work more on my inner energy so that I can shape shift and transform my outer reality. And that's what astrology is all about. The making the taking the perfect selfie and making the perfect selfie <laughs> is what I'm gonna call this video, like I said, um, is more about learning about the depth of what's going on within you on an inner level and taking that that energy and making it kind of like it's like an art almost it's kind of like 
on the inside of you, you may have a collage of different colors, grays, blues, pinks, and colors that you see, like your reality, like, like what do you see when you close your eyes type of thing. That's why meditation is so important because some people, when they close their eyes, they see black, they see nothing. That just shows you what's on your mind. <laughs> that means nothing pretty much is on your mind. That's why you don't see anything because you don't have an imagination because you close your eyes, you just see a blackness. And nothing, and nature is creative. And nature um, illuminates itself through lights and through, not just lights, but through the, the proper organization of certain lights. This is what makes up nature. So say for what I mean by that is like you have stars, you have the moon, you have the sun. These are various different forms of light. And nature and your reality is really based upon the reflecting of light. What you see is predicated upon light reflecting itself. So really it's all taking place on another realm. Physical reality is not just physical. So in order for you to understand the age of Aquarius and getting into the knowledge of making a perfect selfie, you have to understand the unseen realm and how things work on an unseen level. And this is what we specialize in um, when we go into astrology and the astrological information. Astrology is called the mother of metaphysics. And astrology is, one, Aquarius is one of the main constellations that rules astrology. And in astrology, we go off of the unseen world. Astrology is based upon color, um, polarity, whether it be positive or negative, elements or elementals, and it goes into light and dark and numbers. And in order for you to understand how to make the perfect selfie, which is really just making the perfect life for yourself, that's what I mean by that. In order for you to make that perfect selfie, you have to understand how to manipulate your reality based upon those components I just named. Color, light, dark, sound, there's others. You have to understand how to work with those things, numbers, and use those things to begin to create or draw a reality for yourself. So it's almost like you're drawing a picture that you don't necessarily know how it's going to end in the end because you're just living in the moment and in the now with the picture. So you don't you don't really know how it's going to end. You have an end in mind, of course, but you don't you you, you remain open and you don't limit yourself to that. To thinking that, okay, it's going to end just like this or whatever. Like you you have an end in mind, but you gotta stay in the now and you kinda of create as you go. And you kind of look for signs as you go and symbols as you go. That's the key to astrology. It goes into signs and symbolism and nature and your spirit guides. They communicate with you through signs and symbols. And if your life is in a hell and in a shit, it's because you haven't been reading the signs. You don't read the signs. You just go with what comes at you. And you react instead of being a causer. So you can cause things to happen, even though I said it's feminine and passive, that doesn't mean that you don't react. You react based upon the symbol and the sign that you get, then you react. Versus not paying attention to the sign that's just going on in life and you had all these signs and the next thing you know, boom, you get hit with a situation and you wasn't ready for it, but you really had ample time because nature, nothing happens to you in this reality without first giving you a sign. Believe that. Everything in this reality, whether good or bad, that happens to you, you're going to get a sign first. And you have the power within your being to push away that reality or to accept it as a reality and attract more of it. Or and to accept it as a reality and make it better. You can accept it as a reality and even make it better than what originally the sign showed you it was going to be. So say, for instance, a person may get a sign that said that they're going to attract their soulmate or twin flame was you something positive and they get a sign about that and they already probably have an idea as to the type of person that they want in their mind so now now they can go and say okay I want this person to like this color and I want this person to like that television show and I want this person to they can begin to add on different components 
so that they can not only just make that dream of attracting a twin flame or soulmate, they need to make it, define it and make it more real. Okay, it's one thing to say you want to attract a twin flame or soulmate, but what do you like? What type of person do you even know what to look for? You know, like that's how a lot of people get caught up and they say, I was told by psychic that I was going to meet somebody and I met this person, but they didn't tell me all this was going to happen. That's because you was told you was going to meet someone, but you didn't work with the unseen reality to, okay, make it manifest the way you want it to manifest. That's the art aspect and how to work with astrology. You didn't do your rituals at a certain time. You see, you didn't listen when you saw the number seven various different times. You didn't listen because maybe that was the life path number of that person that you was going to attract. Maybe they're going to be attracted to the number seven. Maybe that was going to be their life path number or their destiny number. You kept seeing it, but you didn't pay attention to that. So here you go meet this other person now that their life path number is the number six. And you think that's your twin flame or soulmate, and it turns out not to be that. So you, so when you work with the science of metaphysics, it's really an art, which is an art is science. You're a creator. You are creating your reality as you go. The internet is a good example of the perfect selfie. Because in the internet, you may get on the internet and you may not know where you're going with your research that day. You may say, I'm going to get on Google and go Google something about these Nike Air Forces or whatever. So you go Google something about these Nike Air Forces and you see some advertisement on the side that's showing you something different. Like you can create your own Nike Air Force Ones. You can make them different colors, you know, and it may be a tutorial to teach you how to make a, a knockoff version of it. I'm just using that for an example, but I'm saying like you didn't come on the internet with that in mind, but here you are now, you try to create your own shoes. And that's what the perfect selfie is about. Like we are creators, like in the old energy, we took what we were given. In this energy, we have to create our own wardrobe. You say you gotta create your own way. That's why it's called the age of Aquarius. I know. You have to have the knowledge on how to do these things. So it's not about like getting things and just being like waiting on things to happen for you, but it's a matter of creating things to happen for you. That's what I'm getting into. So you have to understand that this reality is based upon colors and lights and numbers and things of that nature. You have to learn how to use these components to put together a picture to make things work for you. You have to play out the energy of the various different and the vibrations and the frequencies of the various different colors and lights that you're working with. So say, for instance, you're moving into an apartment. Let me give you another example. The perfect selfie, which means you got to do you. That's why everybody's saying, I'm going to do me. It's all about me. You know what I'm saying? I'm doing me. It's because you want to put your energy into that room or that apartment that you just moved in by using colors and things of that nature that match up with the reality that you're trying to create for yourself. So say, for instance, you've been in a state where you've been isolated, you haven't had a lot of communication with people, you're trying to track people, social people, contacts into your life. You don't want to paint that room black or paint that room gray or brown or some color like that, or even purple. You don't want to paint that room purple thinking you're going to attract a bunch of social contacts. You better use yellow, you better use orange to learn how to mix some stuff together. You may use a little bit of accent to black and, you know, things of that nature, but you want to make it... You want to use certain colors to attract people into your life. The same thing, like if you want things to go a certain way for you, you want to wear certain colors depending upon the depending upon the reaction that you want people to have of you. So if you want people to notice everything about you, then you may wear a bright color. If you want to kind of remain hidden and unseen, you may wear darker colors. But this is what's going into what making the perfect selfie is about. You want to do things in a certain season. So you want to know the astrological signs. You want to know the zodiac. You want to know, okay, say for instance you're looking for a job that you love. When I say that about looking for a job, like you want to definitely do what you love in this whole perfect selfie moment. Because people always complain, they write me these emails, and they're like, yo, Ron Hotep, I'm really just not happy with my reality. I want to know when is this going to happen. When am I going to find a job that I like? When am I going to... You can't find a job that you like. You have to create the job that you like. So get your mind out of finding, waiting, searching, and start creating. 
if I go on the internet and I do a search and I'm not finding what I'm looking for, then I need to create it. That's the good thing about the internet. You can create what you're looking for on the internet. It's amazing, isn't it? Because even information, if I can't find the information I'm looking for, I can create the information by what going on a message board and asking a question and creating a conversation. And then now I've just created a blog or created a, a, a spread that's detailing what I was looking for. And now I'm not lost anymore. So that's what you have to better yourself. And it starts with knowledge, but it doesn't stop there. You have to be courageous. Like 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 my like my teacher talking about like like my man brother Yanel taught me, you gotta be upright, independent, and fearless. He used to always drill that in my head, one of my teachers. You gotta be upright, independent, and fearless in this new energy. Upright means that you're righteous, meaning that you have control over yourself. Because you have to have control over yourself in anything that you do. Because had I not had control over myself, I would have allowed those women and those negative reptilian forces to destroy me. But I have discipline. That's why you, before you do anything, you got to discipline yourself into the lifestyle of it. You want to be a good race car driver, but you have no discipline. So that's, being, that's what being upright is about. It's about having structure. Independent means that you have to be able to keep everything going with your reality on your own. You may, in, in the course of that, meet people that you can employ, but at the end of the day, you have to keep everything going for yourself. You can't depend on anybody. It's about you. Remember, it's the perfect selfie. So you got to be independent. In. That's the first word. When we just talked about going within. So you have to be willing to go within and to know yourself enough to be independent. The reason why a lot of people aren't independent is because they don't know what they're capable of. They don't know themselves enough. So that's why they're dependent on other people. They don't have enough knowledge of themselves. And lastly, you got to be fearless. Don't let you can't fear nothing in this world because fear is like they say is an acronym for false emotions appearing real. They're just just emotions. Fear is an emotion that a lot of women and people that function up under lower chakra sciences use to try to control people. They use deep red colors. Fear vibrates to the color red. It's the negative aspect of red and black and gray. Fear can become very depressing. It's a depressing energy, and it starts within. It's, it's based on a belief. Fear is always based on a belief. Anything that you fear is a belief. You fear a bumblebee because you believe that if this thing is you, it's going to hurt. You fear getting into a car accident because, you know, many people die, fatal, take on fatal deaths from getting into car accidents. So your, your fear is basically, it starts from within. You have to have a, in order for a fear to turn into a real life reality, it has to be something that was already in your heart, something that you really fear, and it'll, because everything that is within you has to come out, so it'll manifest itself. So in order to make the perfect selfie, you have to have those three things in check, being upright, independent, and fearless. Then on top of that, you have to have a lot of knowledge about the metaphysics and the mechanics that moves this world. If you want to do it in the realm of metaphysics and in the realm of Aquarius, and you're going to have to do it. See, the thing about the age of Aquarius is you're going to have to do it through the modality of numerology or astrology or self-help versus religion because it's not based on belief. It's an art. It's basically based on what you, having knowledge about something and then having a faith to take that something a little bit further. So you can have, it, it, you, don't get me wrong, you have to believe in these things. I'm not saying don't believe in them. To, to start out on the path and on the journey, that's the first step, like we talked about. But you don't want to stop there. So that's what's been really going on with me. Um, and that's kind of like, I wanted to just kind of like sum up everything into a message that I could offer to the people uh, when I step up here in the studio. Basically what I'm doing here is, is that I'm using situations and things that are going on in my life and turning them into teaching pieces so that they can help various different people. Because I realize that I am a beacon of positive light to a small group of people. And I have an obligation, according to the universe and nature, that nature is, is it works in cycles. 
in nature, he notices it finishes everything that it starts. What goes around comes around. So I started something here, and I have an obligation to see it through. And me helping to be one of the ones that started the movement to uh, teaching people about their call in the unseen world and metaphysics, I have an obligation to continue that and to further that. So yeah, Ron Hotep is, is the state is perfect. Everything is in order. Um, we are a council. That's how you got to look at it now. This is the estate of Ram Hotep Hill. This is the council of Ram Hotep Hill. You are your 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 life is supposed to be a reflection of your name. And you turn that into your your vast estate. It's predicated upon at the end of the day, that's all you had is the names of things. And you have to turn those things into your estate. So you have, this is how you create a wheel. We talk about a wheel. What is a wheel? See, a wheel is an estate, essentially. It's a document that disseminates certain assets into various different trusts. And a name is a trust, as we talked about in other videos. So... This is what I learned that you, in making the perfect selfie, you make it about other people because you are putting your will out into the world and it's going to affect other people. So you have a right to have a will and a testament. And a lot of people nowadays, especially so-called melanated people, we don't believe in, in that, in writing a will. But you notice that a will has to be written. You have to have certain trust set up and certain names to disseminate the assets of the will through. So this is what we've been working on. And this is what we've been doing to kind of like capture our perfect selfie here in this reality. See, how long your, your selfie is going to last is predicated upon your will, believe it or not. So what do I mean by that? Like, say, for instance... You want to be remembered for a thousand years. So how did you employ your will? Did you employ your will and set it up in a way to be remembered for a thousand years? Let's think about, let's talk about the trust of Andrew Jackson. Andrew Jackson is still remembered because he set up an estate or that group, because actually Andrew Jackson is a group of people. See, this is what people fail to realize. These public names that are estates turn out to be groups of people the estate of Andrew Jackson because there's more than one. However, Andrew Jackson still had to have a will and an image and a legacy set up in the world before he transformed or transitioned so that he would be remembered. That's the perfect selfie. It's not just paint the picture, but it's paint the picture in a certain like like with certain ink that's going to be permanent. So say for instance the pyramids. The pyramids are, is an example of a perfect selfie. Because what did they do in the pyramids? And you could say, well, the Egyptians, they were narcissistic. They always try to say people that do selfies and people that are in front of cameras are narcissistic. No, narcissists, or whatever they call them. Excuse me, these English words sometimes twist me up. But um, Yeah, so they say that people that, <laughs> the people, the Egyptians, you know, they, they, were, they were narcissists. They, uh, drew themselves and pictures on their wall. They spent their whole life really just building statues of themselves and that's all they cared about was they self. Yeah, they were into they was involved in the perfect selfie. When Egypt was constructed, that was during the time of Leo. Leo deals with the self. And Aquarius is the opposite of Leo. So just because it's the opposite of Leo doesn't mean that it's not about the self. That means that it's on an inner level, in order for Aquarius to be social, because that's the social side. It deals with social groups. But it's about finding yourself within a social group. So you still have to know yourself. 
So they were big, the Egyptians, they were big on making a perfect selfie. So much so that you're still looking at their selfie 10,000, 12,000 years later. They built them pyramids over 12,000 years ago, and you're still trying to decode their selfie. So that's what making the perfect selfie is all about. So I'm not going to say too much more. Um, thank you guys for listening and learning. And um, I look forward to viewing you guys' videos and just, you know, getting forward to you guys' emails. I don't reply to a lot of them. Um, these days, they just forward me the emails, and I just kind of read them, and I'll try to address these things in various different videos. However, I'm still on my, my inward journey, still on my inward sabbatical to kind of create my perfect selfie. So, got a lot to do working with the star seeds and things of that nature. So, a lot to do in the community. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. Namaste.